Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture as well as all of the latest news from the world of archaeology. In my last video I discussed the latest archaeological news coming out of Cusco in Peru, that a branching tunnel system had been confirmed using geophysics, and it ran from the hilltop site of Sacsayhuaman all the way to the heart of historic Cusco. For many of us who have researched this part of the world, the tunnel system was not a great surprise, and that's because there are numerous eyewitness accounts written over the past few centuries. Some people looked at the accounts as fictional, so the fact the tunnels are now confirmed is a major breakthrough, and I personally can't wait to see inside. Because nearly four years ago, I made a series of videos on Sacsayhuaman where I mentioned the legends of the tunnel system, and I put forward my own hypothesis as to what their primary use was, the real reason they were built. Well, after reviewing my research from 2021, the new findings make me feel even more certain I was on the right track. And I say primary use because a tunnel system linking Cusco, Sacsayhuaman and other Inca sites would no doubt have had many secondary uses. Yes, it could have been used in warfare, a place to hide inside, a place to escape through and a place to spring an attack from and it could also be somewhere to hide Inca treasure and codices. But looking at what we know so far, which admittedly is very little, and it doesn't look like the most tactical of constructions. For the most part, the tunnel is straight. Apparently, there were stone towers constructed at intervals above it, and these were possibly ways inside. It's shallow, and it's directly below the old main Inca street. As it continues northward, it then seems to follow the topography of the hill. If the tunnels were built to hide people and treasure, you'd think they'd be harder to find. And according to the eyewitness accounts, many people did find them, in every period of history since the Spanish conquest. Therefore, in the operations of the Inca capital city, I suspect their primary use was more functional because the Inca was so much more than ceremony, ritual and warfare. They were master builders and engineers, they knew how to plan and build settlements, and when we look closely at where the tunnel system begins at Sacsayhuaman, it soon becomes clear as to why the Inca went to so much trouble to build such a large and direct system of subterranean passages. In my opinion, they did have a very specific function. Here is the main branch of the tunnel, and so far we know it runs from the Coracancha, and then below the old main Inca street of Cusco, and then terminates, although I should say begins right here, right next to the amazing Coca Chincanas man-made reservoir of Sacsayhuaman, and I don't think that that's a coincidence. Coca Chincanas is enormous, having an oval shape and a diameter of around 100 metres. In the native Inca language, coca means lake, pool or pond, and chincana means labyrinth or place where one gets lost. So I guess coca chincanas, the name of this feature at Sacsayhuaman, pretty much tells us what we're looking at, a body of water and a connected labyrinth of tunnels. In 2021, in the videos I made on Sacsayhuaman, I propose the tunnels, if they existed, as they were still looked at as a mere myth or legend, were created for the transportation of fresh, natural spring water from Sacsayhuaman all the way to the heart of Cusco, about one mile away. And now we know the tunnels do exist, now they've been mapped out with geophysics, it seems I could well be correct after all. But already you may be wondering, if Coca Chincanas and the entrance to the tunnel system is situated on high ground, where does the water come from? Well, there is in fact more than one natural spring in this area. One of them is apparently located in this region right here. It's known as Calis Pucio, 
and it's a sacred spring with a connecting basin like structure, and this was apparently used in the initiation ceremonies of Inca boys. Apparently, ceremonial shells and crystals were found inside. The same spring would have also fed the enormous Cocachincanus reservoir, and it's also right next to the entrance of the tunnel system. Again, in my opinion, it is not a coincidence. It must be by design. Geologically speaking, this area is an unconformity, a place where two different rock formations come together. We have the amazing Rhododero formation that's made from igneous rock and then surrounding beds of limestone. Groundwater can travel through the limestone, but eventually it would reach the much harder mass of igneous rock. And so the water would need to find another route through the limestone or be released at the surface as a natural spring. And that's exactly what happens right here. We're looking at the site of a sacred spring a source of clean, fresh water that rises from the earth. Many experts have studied the Inca's relationship with water, and although the deep connection is not the subject of this video, there is plenty of evidence to say that water was a key symbol in Andean thought. The control of water meant the control of power, because if managed correctly, you could essentially manage the food and water supply for the people. Water was also a key element in the Inca vision of the cosmos. Myths say their civilization arose from the sea, through one of its main manifestations at Lake Titicaca. They moved through the underground watercourse, the veins of Mother Earth aka Pachamama, until they came to the surface through springs, upwellings, rivers, lakes and caves. These places were called Pacarinas, or places where nations dawned. Water was sacred in all Andean cultures, and especially through the period of Inca dominance. I could go into this a lot further, but for now that's a very brief overview, so you can understand why the Inca would go to so much trouble building structures for the containment and transportation of water. It had a spiritual and ritual meaning to the Inca, but a spring was also a natural source of clean, fresh drinking water. Furthermore, here at Sacsayhuaman, it was coming out of the ground in what is truly a spectacular and beautiful natural environment. For some background, the Rodadero is a natural formation of andesitic igneous rock which geologists call an orgite microdiorite porphyry. In sequence, the surrounding Cretaceous limestone beds were laid down first of all, and then, sometime after, there was an intrusion of molten igneous magma into the bedded limestone. In time the magma cooled down, the rocks were then uplifted and erosion took place, leaving us with this amazing looking rock formation. Today we can see what looks like a series of bulges and stretch marks on its surface. These were formed by the friction between the unconsolidated magma and the limestone beds it was thrust into. We also see some localised metamorphism of the limestone, where the two rock types came together. And for those that don't know, metamorphism means the heat from the magma has altered the limestone in the places where they came into contact changing the rock structure to be crystalline and harder. Today, the Rhododero igneous rock formation looks like a series of linear channels, and they're commonly known as the Inca Slides, and this is for obvious reasons. And apparently, Inca children did play on them in such a manner, and tourists do today. It's no surprise that this area would become sacred ground a place to build around and venerate, and we do find Kilke or Proto-Inca architecture at Sacsayhuaman. It was a place that was venerated at the very start of the Inca Empire. So, we have an amazing natural rock formation, which is unlike anything else in the region, and we also have at least one associated natural spring. 
there are proto-Inca and Inca structures built all around, making this a truly sacred and venerated site. In my research, it has been difficult to pinpoint the exact position of the main spring, but I have it on good authority it's somewhere in this region. And here we find a mass of limestone, and originally it would have been a large mass of bedrock. Today, some of it is still bedrock, yes some of it is still connected to the ground, but there are also many broken boulders. The area really looks like a mess. Looking at footage recorded by Ben from Uncharted X, and we can see that some of the limestone has been cut and shaped by human hands. But the huge amount of later damage does make it impossible to know what it would have looked like originally. Because of the natural spring emanating from the bedrock, and also because of the Inca's relationship with water, this area was likely deemed sacred, and that's probably why the Inca left a specific piece of bedrock in situ, and why they didn't quarry it for building stone. It's where the water came from. But they did sculpt it, and this was likely an act of veneration. In this area we can also make out a few signs of water related architecture, with carved outflow pipes and what look to be water channels. Sadly, this part of Sacsayhuaman has been badly damaged, possibly caused by the Spanish conquest, or maybe even centuries later with the use of dynamite, something that did happen at Sacsayhuaman. Sadly there are no detailed records of the destruction. To the northeast of the large Cocachincanus Reservoir, there is also another large chunk of limestone, and this has also been carved and venerated, and it's known as Piedra Cansada. From here we find stone built channels running towards Cocachincanus, and it is thought by many to be the site of another ancient spring. And this is likely another one with another carved mass of limestone and associated channels and basin structures. There could also be another right here on the very edge of Cocachincanus itself. But going back to the location of the first spring, and to me it's no coincidence we find a ceremonial pool and a large man-made reservoir. They were built here because of the spring water. And yes, right here we also find the entrance into the huge tunnel system that was only confirmed by the international team of experts last month. Again, in my opinion, this is no coincidence. To me, it's a logical step to link the tunnels with water, that it was built to transport the sacred spring water, clean and naturally filtered, all the way from Sacsayhuaman to the heart of Cusco. And you have to ask, if this was not their purpose, why on earth would you position the opening of a tunnel system right in the vicinity of a natural spring? If you want the tunnels to remain dry, to be a place for human transportation or a storehouse of precious objects, then logically, you'd create the entrance into the tunnels pretty much anywhere except here. It would be the worst place to build it and the Inca did not do anything by accident. We know they were master architects, master builders and masters of water management. We can see dozens of examples at so many famous Inca sites, including the canalisation of the rivers surrounding Cusco, we find drainage channels, pools, aqueducts and reservoirs, and also decorative water features. Some would argue that it's this management of water that made the Incas so successful, and why their structures have withstood the test of time. In the Cyclopean walls of Sacsayhuaman, you can also see purpose-built drainage holes, and these are small yet important features to allow groundwater to pass through. Regarding water, the Inca knew exactly what they were doing. In one of the videos I made back in 2021, I speculated that the reservoir of Cocachincanus provided water to Cusco, due to the fact that this reservoir is on higher ground and next to a valley that runs down into the city. And I even said this. 
There are also many legends that say you can travel through the tunnels from Piedra Cansada and Sacsayhuaman and end up in Cusco. Some legends also say they go right into the heart of the Coracancha. As stated, I believe that these tunnels are in fact water channels, an incredible, complex and impressive feat of engineering by the ancient Peruvians. As I believed in 2021, and as I still believe in 2025 now the tunnels have been confirmed, the primary use of these tunnels was for the transportation of clean, fresh and sacred water. A complex and impressive feat of engineering by the Inca. It is great to be able to look back at my old videos and see where my research led me, and then to have my old ideas validated with new discoveries. In a video I made in June 2021, I also discussed two square buildings and a circular tower that once stood on the main hill at Sacsayhuaman. In the 1930s, Sacsayhuaman was excavated by Louis E. Valcasel, and in his report, he said that as well as having king's lodgings and compartments within the tower complex, it was also a reservoir, containing very pure water. The chronicler Gotolasso de la Vega also said the same thing, that water was brought here from far below ground, and the Inca could not say where it was from, because these things were kept secret. Well, it looks like geophysics has now revealed the secret, because amazingly, one of the branches of the new tunnel system runs from the natural spring in this direction, passing under the incredible polygonal walls, and if we continue the line of this tunnel, it looks to be heading straight for the stone tower. So, I can make the logical deduction that this is how they filled the tower with what they call very pure water. It was pure. It was natural spring water that had been filtered through the bedrock, and better than anything you'd find in a nearby river or lake. And also look at this. Another branch of the tunnel network confirmed by geophysics, and this branch runs through either below or into the Cochinchinconus Reservoir, and then beyond, and other Inca reservoir structures are found in this direction. The confirmation of the tunnel network in and around Cusco and Sacsayhuaman has reinvigorated my interest in this part of the world. After making my series of videos in 2021, I did feel as though I'd gone as far as possible with the information available. But now that geophysicists have began mapping the tunnel network, the fact we know it definitely starts at the site of a natural spring and is connected to the region's largest man-made reservoir, well, I'm convinced that these tunnels were dug for the movement of clean, fresh water, delivering it to the people of the city. I expect the start of the tunnels to be cave-like in appearance, naturally carved out by the groundwater with the dissolution of the limestone bedrock, but then the Inca extended it, delivering water to nearby Cusco and the other destinations the branching tunnel system leads to. And there could well have been a way to open and close the tunnels to the water. Maybe water was only delivered to Cusco at certain times of the year. And yes, the tunnels were still likely used by the Inca to hide treasure and move dignitaries, because desperate times call for desperate measures. And so, archaeologists could well still find precious objects inside for that reason. But I think we do need to seriously consider the idea that these tunnels were created for the movement of clean, fresh water, infrastructure to help Cusco prosper as the capital city of the Inca. Now we know the tunnels are associated with the source of water, well to me it all seems to make sense. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.